Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, my name is Lindsay Funtick, and I am the coordinator of volunteer ministries at Ashland First United Methodist Church. Uh, and every Thursday, I hop on here to share a little bit about uh, my devotional thoughts for the week and what the Lord has been teaching me. Uh, today, we're going live a little bit earlier and with a different background, uh, but same Lindsay. And in fact, first, you have had the same Lindsay for the past year. So yesterday, I celebrated my one-year anniversary at Ashland First United Methodist Church. And it was really, really fun to spend some time uh, thinking back over the year, uh, reflecting a little bit. And uh, during our prayer respite time, I was praying over the sanctuary in the sanctuary. And uh, the word that just kept coming to mind was vital. And so I got to kind of think through all of the different ways in which this past year um, being in your faith family has been vital in my journey, uh, in my discipleship. And um, it's just it's just been such a gift to me. Uh, so first and foremost, before I kind of launch into all of my other thoughts, uh, first, I love you. I just want to thank you so much for this last year. Um, it has been absolute joy uh, to be serving alongside you uh, and to learn more about this God whom we love together. So uh, yes, it has been very, it has been vital and I've learned so much. Uh, as I have been reflecting on my own past year uh, in ministry at first, uh, I began to kind of think about the church universal, the church writ large, and the ways in which we are also vital um, as the body of Christ to uh, the ministry here on earth, to being his hands and feet, um, to building the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven in this in-between time where Jesus has come and Jesus is coming. Uh, so in thinking about that, I was thinking through five different prayers that I prayed over first, I continue to pray over first, um, but I also pray over the church, the world over. Um, and these are not comprehensive, uh, but I think that they are good starting points for where the Lord is leading the church and how he is using uh, his body here on earth. So I thought I would share those prayers with you today. So the first is God dwell with your people. Give us a keen awareness, awareness that you are near. So I was just thinking about the fact that my first thought was to say, God dwell with your people. Uh, but then the realization dawned that God is already dwelling with his people. Uh, the tabernacle is with humanity. Uh, God dwells among us. And I think that it's really easy for us to take that for granted. Uh, I just got this picture of... Um, any church, there's so many of us that walk by on Sunday morning. It's like we're walking by the divine presence um, just kind of as we go about our days. And so I just pray that the Lord will give the church, the Big C Church, an awareness of the fact that he is near and he is working and he is tangibly present with us. Uh, so I just pray, Spirit, that you would open our senses to know and understand that and to really kind of dwell in the beauty of that, uh, the fact that the living God has decided to make his home among us. So first and foremost, Lord, we ask that you give the church a keen awareness of your presence to know that you are already dwelling with us. The second prayer is God twirl us into your movements, not the other way around. Uh, I am the most guilty, uh, as Paul would say, I, of sinners. I am chief among them. Uh, when it comes to thinking up my own plans, uh, thinking up my own tasks or what I think would be good for this program or this ministry or what have you, um, and then kind of like asking God on the other side of it, like, oh yeah, we bless us, please. Uh, and I think that my prayer for myself, but also for, again, the Big C Church, is that we would ask God to reveal to us how God is already working and then be twirled into that dance that's already happening. Uh, I think that it's a lie that I often believe that, um, yeah, that, that the Lord working is contingent upon what I do, but that's not true. Uh, the Lord is working here and now, uh, and he invites us to participate 
in his good work, in the redemption he's bringing about, in the restoration he's building. So I just pray that we would be able to see what he is doing and participate as opposed to seeing what we want to do and asking him to come along for the ride. It's far better when it's his plans. So for the church, I pray God twirl us into your movements, not the other way around. The third prayer, I said, God, give us grace for one another and ourselves. Help this set us apart from the world. The world is divided enough is what it comes down to. Uh, I just pray that the church the world over would be an example of a better way, uh, that we would not let division um, tear us apart, and that we would give each other grace to be human, and that we would give ourselves grace to be human as we are learning and growing and going along. So that one kind of speaks for itself, but God give us grace for one another and ourselves. Let it set us apart from the world. Um, Lord, make your church look different. Make your church stand out. Be an example of your love, which turns things on its head. Fourth, God, give us joy in what we are doing with you. Infuse us with endurance and enthusiasm. I have talked to a lot of my friends in ministry, uh, even just my friends who are seeking to follow Jesus, and burnout is a really big thing, or just doing something because, oh, well, this is how I've, this is something I've always done, uh, this is, no, if I don't do it, no one will do it, uh, just kind of this, like, sense of obligation that we sometimes have in the church, uh, and this, again, church universal uh, and I just pray that the Lord would remind us again of the joy of serving alongside him, serving him, sure, uh, serving one another, but serving together. And there's so much beauty in that, that we forget in sort of the, the midst of checking off our checklists or just getting things done because that's how we've always done it. Um, but I just pray also in that. He would give us endurance um, because it is a long road. There is a, um, there's a lot to be done. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, go into making a church work. There's a lot of things that go into making sure conversations happen and services happen. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into the kingdom being built here on earth as it is in heaven. Um, but I, so I pray that there's endurance, that there's strength to keep going forward. Um, but I also pray for enthusiasm that the Lord would energize us for this work, and especially for those of us who have walked with Jesus for a long time, that we would just feel excited anew about what he is doing and how he is inviting us to participate. So Lord, give us joy in what we are doing. Infuse us with endurance and enthusiasm. Um, there's so much in that, friends. Uh, there's so much joy to be had. And finally, God, empower us to keep learning and growing as we walk this long obedience in the same direction. That's a line. I've talked about it before, um, but Eugene Peterson has a book called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. And I just love that phrase um, because we are heading down a path and sometimes that path winds, sometimes it's straight Sometimes it's flooded and there's lightning and tornadoes and fire and it just feels like everything is hopeless. Um, but I pray that the Lord would give us an understanding of the fact that we are still journeying. We are still going. Uh, we have not arrived yet. I pray against any of our human inclinations to believe that there's nowhere else, there's no more growing to do, uh, that we have it all figured out, um, that he would just empower us to keep at it, to keep learning, to keep growing, and to be, to keep being molded into the image of Jesus as we just keep on trucking. Um, so God, empower us to keep learning and growing as we walk this long obedience in the same direction. So I just, I definitely had a poetic moment yesterday during respite when I was praying these prayers for our church, for the Big C Church, um, and just 
a joy in knowing that I get to participate. And again, first, I just say thank you for this year. Uh, thank you for um, your hospitality, for welcoming John and I into your family, and for allowing us to participate in the kingdom work that you are doing um, and in partnering, all of us partnering together to move that kingdom forward in the name of Jesus. So I just pray um, that I, onward to the next year, I'm excited about what is ahead. Um, come what may, you know, pandemic, come what may. Um, but in the meantime, let us just be aware that the Lord is on the move, that there is, that there is grace afoot, uh, and that the church is the bride of Christ we are loved. That is a powerful thing, friends. So let's remember who we are and let's keep going. So in the meantime, I say with all of the gusto that I can, Ashlyn first, I love you with my whole heart. I think of you, I pray for you, and I'm so honored to be in your midst. So in the meantime, I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Have a great Thursday.